Hi, Matt Toms with another One Chart lesson. Today we are looking at bar chords. We're going to learn how to do all kinds of bar chords uh, in the one lesson. They're actually quite easy, it just takes a little bit of time to perfect, but the theory and, and the knowledge that you need to actually get all your different bar chords in order is relatively simple. We, we just need to do a couple of things uh, and I'm going to take you through those steps in order to get you playing about 60 different types of bar chords in two different voicings all over the guitar neck, okay? So, the first thing we need to do is we need to memorize the notes on the E and the A strings. And the reason why we do that is because they are going to be the two strings on which our root notes for all our bar chords are placed. If you don't know what a root note is, it's the bass note for any chord. So it's the lowest note in the chord and it has the same name as the chord, whether it's an E minor or an E major or an E7 or a minor seven, its root note is E. This open E string is your root note for the E chord and the E minor chord and the E7 chord and the E minor seven chord and the E major seven chord all have their root note on the E string, it's open E string. A chords, A, A minor, A minor seven, A seven, A major seven, all have their root notes on this open A string. Now I'm only talking about A shaped chords and E shaped chords because they're the only two types of chords we really need for all our bar chords. We don't use D shapes, C shapes, G shapes, although you can, they're not as easy with fingering. So the E shapes and the A shapes are the two main families that we ever talk about with bar chords. They're also called root six bar chords for the E shaped bar chords and root five bar chords for the A shaped bar chords. And the reason why we call them that is that with an E shaped chord, as I just showed you, the, the root note is on the E string, on the sixth string. And for A-shaped chords, the root note is on the fifth string, the A string. So we need to know all our notes up and down the E and the A strings off by heart. It's basic knowledge that every guitarist should know. It's easy to get that knowledge. And I'm going to show you a simple exercise that will help you memorize those notes very, very simply. From your open E string, you step up to the first fret, and that's F. Second fret is F sharp third fret is G, and so on. But we skip over the sharps and flats because in this uh, memorizing exercise, if we do every single note, including the sharps and flats, there's less incentive for your brain to memorize these notes because you're just doing one after the other after the other and what you're doing is you're reciting a chromatic scale. So what we do is we skip over these and we just do all the natural notes, which are the ones that aren't sharp or flat. So all the natural notes are E, F on the first fret, G on the third fret, A on the fifth fret, B on the seventh fret, C on the eighth fret, D on the tenth fret, and E on the twelfth fret. When you get to the E, you've actually reached the halfway point on your string. So when you halve the length of the string, and everything stays the same with the thickness of the string and the tension on the string, halving the length of that string doubles the frequency or puts it up one octave. So when we get to our 12th fret, everything starts again. So we don't need to go past the 12th fret in order to memorize these notes. A, you're, going to not, you're not going to do bar chords up past the 12th fret hardly ever. But the pattern above the 12th fret is the same as the pattern above the open string. So to memorize those, what you need to do is this. You need to say the name of the note as you play it. Without saying it, again, you're just, you're just playing a little pattern and you might be memorizing that pattern, but you won't actually be memorizing the names of those notes. So you go E and say it out loud. F, say it out loud. G, A, B, C, D, E. And when you get to E, turn around and come back. And backwards really helps you memorize it. E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E. Very, very simple, really effective way of memorizing those notes. The reason why we don't worry about the sharps and flats as well is that if you know where your A is, you automatically know where your A flat is. It's one half step below it or one fret below it. You automatically know where your A sharp is because it's one half step or one fret above the A. 
the same with all the other ones. If you know where your F is, you automatically know where your F sharp is. So we're only worrying about memorizing the natural notes. When you play up and down those notes, it doesn't matter what fingers you use. This is not a, an exercise about fingering notes. This is an exercise about memorizing the notes on the E and the A strings. So now we do the A string and we do exactly the same thing, starting at the open A string. So don't forget to always include the open note, the open string. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. On the 12th fret, turn around and come back down. A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. If you do that simple exercise, once each time you pick up the guitar for the next week, you'll have it memorized. Now we move on to the chords. The next step in, in learning your bar chords is to take all our E-shaped chords and our A-shaped chords, the, the five different types that I showed you just before, E major, E minor, E7, which is also known as an E dominant seven, E minor seven, and an E major seven. In the A-shaped family of chords, you've got A major, A minor, A minor seven, A seven, or A dominant seven, and A major seven. Now I want you to do all those chords, the five E's and the five A's, I want you to use them, I want you to play them using fingers two, three, four, instead of fingers one, two, three. We all learn how to play our chords incorporating this first finger when we start playing guitar. So that's the natural way of everyone playing those open chords, but now I want you to keep that first finger spare because that's going to be our bar finger. And our bar finger is the one that goes across all the strings. By the way, there's a couple of different ways to spell bar, as in bar chords. One is the old French way, which is B-A-R-R-E, and the other way is the English US way, which is B-A-R. It doesn't matter which way you spell it, they're bar chords. So, try playing your E chord, leaving that first finger spare. So second finger goes on the G string first fret, third finger goes on the A string second fret, pinky goes on the D string second fret. Just practice getting comfortable with that. Use those fingers every time you play an E chord, every time you play an E minor chord, every time you play, play an E7 chord, an E minor 7 chord. The E major 7 is a, is a slightly different one which we'll get to at the end of this video. But those three fingers will take all your E family chords. The same goes for your A family of chords. Use fingers two, three, four. Keep this first finger spare. For your A, for your A7, for your A minor, for your A minor seven, and for your A major seven. Once we've got those two pieces of knowledge, we can play all the bar chords we need. We are now going to take our first chord, our E chord. We're gonna learn our root six bar chords or our E-shaped bar chords. There's your E, your root note is on that open E string. And we're going to move it up one fret. And when we move it up, the notes that our three fretting fingers are already on, they move up one fret, but we haven't moved these open string notes up at all yet. So now our bar finger comes into play. We put that across the first fret, all the way across, and we play an E-shaped chord on the first fret which now means that our root note is on the first fret, which means it's an F, which means that E is now an F major. The same thing would happen if it was an E minor. That would now be an F minor. An E minor seven shape on that first fret would be an F minor seven shape. So you can see that all of those E shaped chords Major, minor, seven, minor, seven, seven, major, seven. They tell you what type of chord it is and then where your root note is, what fret your bar finger is on, tells you what key that chord is, whether it's an E, an F, an F sharp, a G, etc. 
So, take an E major chord, move it up one fret, play an F. Move it up another fret, play an F sharp. Third fret, that's a G. So there's a G bar chord. Sounds the same as a G open chord, slightly different voicing. Keep going up, there's your G sharp major. Fifth fret, there's your A major. And so on and so forth. So all the way up now, you've got every single major chord. Do it with an E minor shape. F minor, F sharp minor, G minor, G sharp minor, A minor, B flat minor or A sharp minor, whichever way you want to call it. B minor, C minor, same thing happens. Same thing with your E minor 7 chord, F minor 7, F sharp minor 7, blah 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 blah, and your F7, F sharp 7, G7, A flat 7 or G sharp 7, A7, and so on and so forth. So you can see by taking that one chord shape and sliding it anywhere up and down your E string, or anywhere up and down your, your neck, I should say, gives you a different major chord, a different seventh chord, a different minor chord, a different minor seventh chord, and a different major seven chord. But as I said, we'll get to the E major seven shape in a moment. So one more thing, when you're putting your bar finger across, the tip of your first finger is the most useful part of your finger. It's strongest, it's sensitive, put the tip of your finger on the root note of your E string, on your E string. And make that the first thing you do. When you reach for a chord, say you want to reach for a G sharp minor chord, the first thing you want to do is you put your finger on, you put your bar finger or your first finger on the G sharp. You find that first, which is why it's incredibly important to have that knowledge of those notes up and down the E string. Someone calls out, Play a G sharp minor, straight away you go to the G sharp, which is on the fourth fret of the E string. Then it's a minor, so you need to play an E minor shape chord. We're on the E string, so it needs to be an E shaped chord. So it's minor, it needs, if it's minor, it needs to be an E minor shape. Now, the same thing happens with the A shaped chords, except our root note is now on the A string. So, if you play an A major and you move it up one fret, that's an A sharp major or a B flat major. Move it up again, that's a B major. With this major shape, apart from the other A shaped chords, with this A major shape, because you've got three fingers in a row there, some people find it difficult to do, an a, do a bar chord like that. So what most people do is place their third finger flat down across the D, G and B strings. It's like playing an A, an open A chord like that. But what we do is we leave, we leave that E first string a little muted so we don't hear it because it's hard to let it ring out when you're fretting that note on the B string second fret. So you'd have to really bend that third finger awkwardly to still hear that E string. Some people can do it, most people don't worry about it. And you don't need to worry about it, it's not that important. Come back to the second fret, so we're going to play our A shaped chord, A major shaped chord on the second fret. When we get to the E string, just make sure that you release a little bit of pressure off that string but keep touching it so it's muted. Now the other little bit of muting you want to do with your A shaped bar chords is let your bar finger, let the very very end of your bar finger, the very tip, just slightly and gently touch the E string. You don't want to fret the E string, you want to just touch the side of it so it muffles that string. That way when you strum a chord, even if you do strum the E string, you won't hear it in the chord because we don't want to hear that E string in our root five bar chords. With those two little things in mind, the muting of the top E string and the muffling of the E string as well, our A major shape chords are relatively simple. 
it <clears> takes a little bit of strength to, and a little bit of time to build up the strength in your hand to do that comfortably, but keep working at it and it will come. With a, a minor shape chord, it's the same theory. Move it up one fret. Or the other thing you can do with muting that E string, if you're a finger strummer like I am most of the time, you can, when you strum, let that thumb rest on the top of your E string and that muffles that E string as well. So that is an A sharp minor because it's an A minor chord moved up onto the first fret. If we moved it up onto the second fret, it would become a B minor. C minor on the third fret, C sharp minor on the fourth fret, D minor on the fifth, E flat minor on the sixth, or D sharp minor, depending on what you want to call it. E minor up here on the seventh fret, F minor on the eighth, F sharp minor on the ninth, G minor on the tenth, on the eleventh fret, it's an A flat minor or a G sharp minor. And then when we get to the 12th fret, if you can play that, we're back at an A minor again. So you get the idea. Any of those shaped chords, whether they're A7, A minor 7, etc., etc., can be moved up and down the neck. The first thing you want to do is land your root note on the fret that you need to to play your E flat major 7. So before you started watching this video, an E-flat major 7 would have sounded like a complicated chord to play. There it is right there. It's an A major 7 shape placed on the 6th fret where your E-flat note is as your root note. Now, the last one we want to touch on is the root 6 major 7 chord or the E-shaped major 7 chord which I mentioned earlier. The, the easiest way to think of this is as an A minor shaped chord, but your root note is on the E string. Now your root note needs to be on the same, on the same fret as your second finger. So it's kind of like, it's not like that. It's, <laughs> I was gonna say it's kind of like a, an A minor shaped bar chord, but you're moving your root note up a fret and across onto the E string. And the other thing that you're going to do with this particular chord is to make sure that your A string and your E string, top E string, first string, is muffled. Because the only notes that you want to hear in this particular major 7 chord are the notes that your fingers are pressing down on which is the E string, D string, G string, and B string. Now, my root note here is on the third fret of the E string, so that's a G. So therefore, that is a G major seven. If you're playing it as an A shaped bar chord, you would go up to your G here on the 10th fret of the A string and play your A7, A major seven shaped chord. So on the 5th fret, it's an A major 7. On the 7th fret, it's a B major 7. And so on and so forth. So because I'm a finger strummer, again, I find it easy to actually pick with those fingers all the notes in that chord. The E string and the D, G, B with those three fingers. It makes it even easier to avoid the A string and the E string. Okay, so with that knowledge, all you have to do now is practice your bar chords. And you have to listen to your bar chords and you have to work out if there's anything that's not sounding right, if there's something that's muffled. You have to figure out what string it is. And it'll only be one of two or maybe three things. It'll be not pressing down on the string hard enough. It'll be one of your other fingers touching the string. Or it'll be your bar finger not pressing down and articulating those open string notes or what would be an open string note if that was an E chord. So listen to your bar chords constantly. Analyze them really critically 
and keep working on them. After you've worked on them for a little while, you'll find that they come clean and clear without much trouble at all. And then once you've got that, you've got it sorted. If there are any questions, if you want to ask me anything about bar chords and what I've spoken about in this video, please let me know below. I'm always happy to hear from people and help you out if I can. Now, that's bar chords in a nutshell. You've learned five different voicings for E-shaped or root six bar chords and five different voicings for A-shaped or root five bar chords. You've learned them in 12 different positions up and down the neck more if you can get past your 12th fret. So that's 60 bar chords that you've just learned in two different positions in the space of one lesson. There you are. I hope you found that useful. You should have all your bar chords down in no time. Remember, it's, it's just a matter of slowly working through them and making sure that you articulate all those notes nice and cleanly and clearly. Get your root note down first. That way you've got time to get the rest of the chord down. But if you don't, and the next chord comes along before you've had time to get that bar chord fully formed, the root note will get you out of trouble. It'll get you through that chord to the next chord. And then the next time around, you can actually try and get a little bit faster at, at settling that bar chord in. Practice, practice, practice. Hope you found that useful. Have fun. Keep coming back to the One Chart website. We are adding new charts and lessons like this all the time. And we hope to see you there again soon. Thanks for watching.